Okay, let us go to the book of John. Johanne chapter 11. We read verse 22 until 25. John 11. If there are older people, please, I will preach, but it will I understand that there are older people here who need to also hear what I'm talking about. So sometimes I'll speak our own native languages, but I will interpret whatever that I would have spoken in English. Is it fine? Hmm? Okay, let us read. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let us also read 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Let us pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for this precious, wonderful word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I have sat down and meditated and thought about what God was telling me. And I wrote the title of this message, Your Destiny Will Never Fall Down. Your Destiny Will Never Fall. Your Destiny Will Never Fall. Where we have read, we found Jesus going to where Lazarus was staying, meeting the sister of Lazarus along the way. Why? Because she heard that Jesus was on his way coming. And he went, she went out to go and meet him. Afitamola, when she missed Jesus, she started talking the way she was talking. Why? Because they invited Jesus initially to come because Lazarus was sick but Jesus didn't come at the expected time. Jesus came at his own right time. When Jesus came, it was already four days gone while Lazarus was in the grave. Now, when the sisters heard that Jesus is on the way, they ran also coming to Jesus to tell him or to speak to him. If you were here, our brother wouldn't have died because they knew that Jesus was the healer. Jesus was everything they hoped for in life. So now here we are hearing Jesus having a conversation with Martha, speaking about do you believe? Do you know that I can also do this? Do you know that I'm the resurrection? Do you know that I'm the life? And do you know that everyone who believes in me will never die? Everyone who believes in me will never perish. And then she answered and said, I know, I know that Lazarus will rise up, we will see him again by the last day. And Jesus answered him and said, if you believe, you will also see his glory. So now as in the beginning I've said, I've entitled the message, your destiny will never fall. And you might be asking yourself a question, why destiny and why the death of Lazarus? When Lazarus died, 
It was not a matter of Jesus was not knowing that Lazarus was sick. Jesus had full knowledge of the sickness of Lazarus. And it was also good for him maybe to come and heal him. But if we can listen clearly to this word, we will hear that Jesus took some days not coming to where Lazarus was. I believe as I read the word of God, Jesus was having a reason of not coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus na liba kala ruaya sata kapila. Now, when Jesus came to Bethany, when the sisters of Lazarus saw him, their hearts were painful. Or why Jesus didn't come earlier on so that he can come and meet their problem and solve the problem they were having and make the problem that they were having to be null. But by then, as they were expecting, Jesus didn't come to Bethany. Jesus stayed for four days until he came. When Jesus came to them, Lazarus was already in the grave. And they were not, no longer expecting that there can be something that can happen in the life of their brother and they will ever see their brother again. In other words, in their hearts, they told themselves, it's over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus reached there, People also came. Bomarata Helele also came. Those who want to speak better also came. Those who want to know other people's matters also came. Those who love to criticize also came. Those who want to see what he is going to do also came. And the Bible says when Jesus reached there, by the graveside, from where we have read, he went with the sisters to the grave. And the sisters said to him, no, 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 no. Don't open the grave because it's long this person has died. There will be already a stench inside his grave. Because four days has gone already. We've waited for you and waited and waited until he died. Now you are coming during the last hour, during the hour that it cannot happen anymore. So it's better for you to leave it. Let's just accept its fate. Hallelujah. Tell the person that is close to you, it's fate. This is the language of people of these days. It's our fate. There is nothing we can do about it. It's our fate. So I want to speak to you today. Fate does not work when the name Jesus is there. If all of people, everybody is falling when they reach at this stage. Because it has been designed to be so. But when Jesus is there in you. It will never happen to you the same way it happened to Sophie. Why? Because faith does not happen when Jesus is there. Now, when they reached at the grave side, because of the pain that Jesus saw in their heart, the distress that Jesus saw in them, the brokenness that Jesus saw in them, the rejection that Jesus saw in them, the lack of believing that Jesus saw in them. He said to them, where did you lay him? They went then to the graveside, they showed him. And Jesus said, roll the stone. Take away the stone. Well, after they've taken away the stone, after they've rolled away the stone, the Bible says Jesus looked into heaven and he spoke a few words and just said, Father, I know you hear me and I know for the sake of these people 
for the sake of who? These people. Why did Jesus say these words? That's my question. Jesu Bulegi Mantria Kauri Uboni Ori Huna Leba Mangwe Bao Namola Mabiting. They are there at the graveside, not because they are concerned about why Jesus didn't come earlier. Not because they are concerned, they want to see what is going to do. They just say, uh uh, you know, Jesus Haladi Dira Halaba Bulamato. You know, here, Jesus, where you have reached today, there is nothing you can do anymore. The stage that was there at that time, it was a no hope stage. The stage that was there at that time, it was a no road anymore stage. There is nothing you can do again about what is happening. It is over with Lazarus. We have buried him. So now when Jesus saw these people, he prayed to the father. And after that, he spoke a word and said, Lazarus, come forth. When I read this scripture, I started seeing and thinking where were Boma Rata Hilele by that time? Where were Bob Tandinda Bazabantu by that time? Where were people that were looking, speaking, not even understanding what they are talking about? Not even knowing the God that they were speaking about? Not even knowing the God that they were criticizing? They were just saying it because they were very much not knowing. Or the God that is coming there was a God that is able to do everything and anything. Hallelujah. Now, after when Jesus has prayed and called on Lazarus to come out, the Bible says Lazarus came out of the grave, bound the head and tossed and everything. Like a grave person should be. And then he came out. And Jesus ordered to them and said to them, untie him. Move a full leg. So now, I'm not going to look much closer to what I've been explaining to you now. I just wanted you to have a background of something that I want to speak about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After Lazarus rose from the dead, after the miracle of being resurrected has happened, that's where the issue starts. You know, it was good when people were watching, seeing Lazarus being raised and coming out of the grave. Others were saying, wow. Others were saying, we never thought it would be like this. Others were saying this. Others were saying that. But it was the beginning of a problem. It was the beginning of the disaster. After Lazarus has rise, risen from the dead, many people, the Bible says, they started believing in this Jesus Christ. And when they started believing in Jesus Christ, there were some other people that were starting to have a problem with the believing of other people. Huh? The high priest. The Pharisees. People are going away from us. They are starting to believe in this Jesus. So what is it that we can do? What is it that you can do next? Because it's like in our synagogues we'll be left with nobody. Nobody will be there in our houses anymore. Nobody is going to praise us and worship us again. Because what they were looking at is praises of men. What they were looking at is words of people. When people were speaking about, the, hey, here come the high priest. When they are wearing their long robes as they are passing, that's what makes them tickle and feel good. So they wanted children of God to go on living that right, that same way for the whole of their lives. But Jesus came. Jesus of Nazareth came. Now, when they were starting to have a problem, 
they sat down and they sat down they spoke about this Lazarus this is the core issue that I want to speak about what is it that we can do to this man because if this man is not eliminated people will run to this Jesus people will go to this Jesus okay we have seen him Opening the eyes of the blind. Yes, we saw him. We saw him raising the lame. Mm -hmm. Yes, we saw him. And we saw him speaking to that one who was very sick. And he raised. Yes, we saw him. We saw him doing this. We saw him doing this. But this one. This one. He has done the mother of miracles. And now because Jesus did the mother. Of miracles to the life of Lazarus people started believing in Jesus and the high priest and the Pharisees said it's better it's better we eliminate him we take him away because if we don't we will lose customers if we don't people will run away from us eh? Yes, we are going to church, but nothing is happening. They don't even think themselves and say, because this man has got this multitude, people who are following him, let us go and ask him, how are you doing it? So that maybe God can hear them also and do whatever through them. What they say is, let's eliminate this miracle so that people will never go to him again. Now, after speaking, when they've spoken, people believing and confessing that Jesus is Lord. He is the one. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Others were angry. They were planning on how to destroy the miracle. Let me tell you children of God. There is something that we Christians we don't think about. We don't reason about. Can you bring that small uh, pulpit and put it there? This is what we don't reason. We don't reason that immediately you were HIV positive. I'm giving an example. When God heals you, your enemies will be many than those ones you were having before. Your challenges will multiply. Your problem will multiply. Your troubles will multiply. Oh. Do you know why? Because that miracle that you are having now is better than the miracle you were having before. Because why God, when he does his miracles, he do them step by step, not going down, but going up. If he has taken you up today and make you to be a person you look like, tomorrow he's going to uplift you and give you a job. Next, tomorrow he's going to uplift you and make you a manager. Next, today he gives you a car. Next, today he gives you a house. Next, today he makes you to marry. That's how God works. There is no slope that is going down when we come to God. Everything goes up. Everything goes up. Now, because these people were now planning on the life of Lazarus, remember, children of God, this miracle that has happened through Lazarus I said in the beginning, it's a mother of miracles. I get it? And another thing is, this miracle, in Alema Utu, Ibile in Alemulo Omo. What am I saying? This man was in the grave for four days. After four days, he was told to come forth. I don't know where he was. I don't know what he was doing. 
But all I know is that he was closed in by a big rock. And Jesus said to him, come out, come forth. And he came. When he came automatically, hmm? when he moves, it's a testimony. When he says, uh, a testimony. When he laughs, a testimony. When he speaks, a testimony. There was nothing that anybody was going to do about Lazarus because why? He was a testimony by himself. We didn't need to hear from him when he speaks. All we need to hear was, <coughs> I can't need to at all. I want to tell you something. When you have a mother of miracles, it is tough to close your mouth. When you have a mother of miracles, it is impossible not to speak about it. When you have a mother of miracles, when you walk, you walk testimony. When you speak, you speak testimony. When you cough, you cough testimony. When you jump, you jump testimony. When you say hello, it's a testimony. When you do something, it's a testimony. Why? Because you have a mother of miracles. Why? Because Jesus is here to give us mother of miracles. But this is not a time of looking at yourself and think otherwise about yourself. This is a time of looking at yourself and said, I've been fearfully, wonderfully made by God. I'm not less than anybody. I'm not greater than anybody. I am just what God says I will be. I'm standing by the grace of God. I am walking. It is the grace of God. I can eat. It is the grace of God. I can speak. It is the grace of God. Why? Because you'll be believing in the one who made a miracle in you. Some time back, I was very sick. And I thought, God, if time has come, it's a long time ago. It's fine with me. I can go. And God said, it's not yet time. You haven't even started what I want you to do. And you want to come here. What is it that you want to do here? You have to work first. You have to do what I want you to do first. And I said, okay. But God, if you can heal me, from this problem that I'm having, I'll never close my mouth. I'll always speak of your goodness because I've seen you. This is not a time, Banaba Papa, of keeping quiet about what God has done in us. This is not the right time of assuming that God maybe can do it. The God that we serve can do everything that we ask of him. If we talk to him and say, Daddy, we like this, we need this. He is going to give it to us by the right time. Our problem is, we are not able to wait. We are not able to wait for what? For the time of God. Can you raise these people? Can you raise these men? The situation that you are in today, Maui, is not that God does not know about it. He knows. But he's waiting for the eyes. He's waiting for the eyes. He is just waiting for the eyes. By the right time when the eyes are many, then he will do it. When they have spoken and they don't know what to speak again, he will do it. There are some other things that happen to us. And people don't even notice. They don't even see that there's something that has happened in our lives. 
But today I want to tell you, the things that God will start doing is from today. Everybody will speak about it. Everyone will speak about it. Why? Because God was waiting for this time. This is the first of October. Watch and see what God is going to do. God didn't leave you in that situation because he wants you to die there. God didn't leave you in that shame because he wants you to be shameful forever. No, no. God didn't leave you jobless as you are, penniless as you are. Why? Because he does not recognize and realize that you don't have money. No, no. He was waiting for their eyes. So in other words, when God does something, I read the Bible and I heard the Bible say, when he does it, he does it for the glory of his name. And I ask myself, why does God have to wait for you to suffer like that? For you to be in sickness like that? For you to lack finances and money like that? God is allowing this thing to move. Because what he wants to do next is a mother of miracle. And when God does whatever, you will then be able to reach your expected destiny. You cannot reach your expected destiny unless otherwise a miracle happens to you. It will not happen. But if a miracle happens to you, I love this. I love to joke in the church some month of the time and say, you can see me as I walk. Even if you don't want to see me, you will see me. You will see me. You will see me. You will see me. You will see now it means God allowed me to be plus size lady so that when I'm mom fundi, see when I pass you'll be able to see me and you will ask they say mom ruti makana nisa are you hearing me God want to do things that when you pass people will notice Eh? Rhinos. Hello, tsama ya kama kutu mona. One, two, three, four, five. When God gives you a car, everybody will speak about you. Lira ya na wala na tsama ya kama kutu. Lira uri God has blessed him like that. It cannot be possible. But when they look at you, they found it is impossible, oh. Why? Because there is a destiny that God has placed for you. The problem is, children of God, we don't recognize and realize the destiny that God has placed in store for us. We want to do things our own way. You are wasting your time. We want to do things the way we think. You are wasting your time. Oh, We want to do things according to the way of other people. You are wasting your time. You will never reach there. If you want to see the will of God being perfected in your life. Allow him to move you. Allow him to walk before you. Allow him to come in his own time. Allow him to do things in his own time. By so doing, he will be doing it in a perfect way. And when he does it in a perfect way, oh God, when Mandela is too small for you, when you speak, people will listen. When you talk, people will listen. When you walk, people will listen. When you speak about something, they'll want to know, they want to hear what you were speaking about. Why? Because there is somebody who initiated what you are today. Now, because we have the miracle, and we faint. Power goes away from us. We no longer understand what we wanted to do. 
We no longer know where to look, where to look forward or look backward, sideways or whatever. We no longer understand ourselves. I want to tell you, as a woman of God today, when God blesses you, he blesses you indeed. When God does a miracle in your life, it's a miracle indeed. When God lifts you up, nobody can bring you down. They can say whatever they say. They can talk whatever they talk. They can do whatever they do. But if God says yes, nobody can say no. If God opens the door, nobody can close it. If God says you are going, nobody can say you are not going. What made me happy is the priests and the Pharisees, as I'm about to you, that they were never, never able to kill Lazarus. Whatever, whenever they see him, they were giving the stress of their lives. How can we get hold of him and we kill him? Why, God, about to have a monofella when people see you, just seeing you only? But how can it be more charity we appeal? By seeing you only. If you can just remind and remember yourself when you start going to the house of the Lord, how you were, you will never play by the opportunity that God gives you, even a single day. There is a destiny that God has laid for you. There is some way that God wants to take you. God has a plan for each and every person in this place. But the problem is we want to do things the way other people are doing them. We want to go the way others are going. We want to walk the way others are walking. We will never walk the same way. How many people have died while Jesus was still there? But they were never risen from the dead. Many. Isn't it? And he died. They were being buried each day, day in and day out. But this one, God was having a purpose with him. So that every Jew, when the Jews sees him, they will say, indeed, Jesus is the Christ. Indeed, Jesus is the Savior. Indeed, Jesus has come so that he can save us. And they follow him. Now, whatever that is happening in your life, Wanababa, it is according to to the way God wants it to be. It is not that God is not seeing it. It is not that God is not watching. It is not that God is not seeing what people are saying about you. It is not that God is not hearing what they're talking about. Yes, he's hearing what they're saying. He's hearing what they're talking. He's hearing everything that they're saying. But a month of miracle is on this way. Something good is on its way. When you read in the next verse, the next chapter, John chapter 12, you hear nicely that the priests, the Pharisees were troubled. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not troubled by my presence? You know, there are other people, when they are present, in your presence, you feel very much intimidated. Am I right? Huh? Eh? There are people who, when they come where you are, you start feeling small. There are people, when they come to your workplace, you don't even want to speak in English. Why? Because you will be thinking, I will speak broken English and they will laugh at me. What's the problem with speaking broken English? It's not your mother language now. Huh? I love South Africa because they say 11 languages are what? Eh? Huh? Our Huh? 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 There are things that are making us feel so, so, so small. Whereas we were not supposed to be doing that. Why? Because we know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is a destiny that God has placed for us. For Lazarus, God has attained and retained him in the grave. Why? Because he wanted to use him for people to believe in Jesus Christ. Now, God has placed you in that situation that you are in. Why? Because he wants these people that you are living with, that they can know that you are serving a big God and a God who is can. God is holding you in that situation of poverty. Why? Because he wants it that when he blesses you, everyone will speak about you. Why? Because God has been preserving you. 
and training you so that when you get those riches, you won't play with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, all of us here in the house of God, we have our own respective destinies. Are you hearing me? Go and read in the book of Genesis chapter 37. You'll find a boy, a man called Joseph. This young man was growing. This young man will go out, go in, walk. But when night comes, he dreams. When he wakes up, he goes to the brothers. You know what? I had a dream last night. I dreamt a dream. And in this dream, I saw eyes tying grass and making them to stand. And I also tied my own and put it there. And I saw your own, all of them bowing down and my own was standing. He was a dreamer. He was dreaming. And every time when he dreams, every day, I was saying, and all the brothers sat down and said, No, no. Why me tie o car not to kuna melayena? Yena me tie o dulaye me. Always standing. No. We have to do something about this boy. Now, because the Bible says the father loved him so much, he made him a coat of colors, colorful. Meaning future bright. There is nobody who can do anything about it. Future bright. The father didn't know what he was doing. And one day, he took that coat of his, colorful one. He was sent to follow the brothers. And when the brothers saw him, they say, Ashu werami loro weata. The dreamer is coming. The dreamer is on his way. What is it that we do about this dreamer? Let's kill him. He came, he reached there. He found them. Papa so sent me to come and check if you are still doing well. He gave me some food to come and give to you. He said, okay, put it there. After that, they took him. They took off his jacket, his coat. They wanted to kill him. The elder brother said, no. We cannot shed our own father's blood. Let us sell him. They sold him. After selling him, he went away with the Amalekites. I believe one day he might have sat down in himself and say, but God, are you there in heaven? What is it that is happening with me? Little did he know that he was going step by step, foot by foot, going to his destiny. You cannot stop a person who has been desired to have a destiny by God. You cannot. If God says you are standing, nobody can say sit. When he was there, he even went to jail. Just to cut the story short. He suffered. He even went to jail for something he never did. But when he was in jail, another dreamer dreamed. And another dreamer dreamed again. And he explained the dreams. Because God has given him the authority to dream and explain. After explaining the dreams... He said to them, please don't forget me when you go out. Oh, I love God. When they were out, they forgot about him. The one who was hanged, the one forgot. Until the God of heaven remembers. There is a dreamer who is in jail. His time was of coming out has come. That dreamer must come out of jail. His time of working now has come. The king must have a dream. There must be trouble in Egypt. The king had a dream. Why? Because of the dreamer. Who is in jail for something he doesn't know. After dreaming, the cupbearer 
came and said, yo, yo, there is a boy in prison. I tell you, see me, Lord, over here, Shelley. Hoshi, if you can just call this one, I know you will know the explanation of your dream. The Bible says he was called. He came and explained. After explaining, that's what I love God about. After explaining, the king of Egypt said, you know better. You have explained well. I don't know what you're talking about. He even speak that we have to build houses for the corn and everything and everything. You are the one to do it. You will be the second in my kingdom. I'll be the only person who is on top of you. Joseph reached his destiny that day. Why? Because he holded on to the dreams that God was giving unto him. The problem is when we meet challenges in life, when we meet people who laugh at us, when we meet people who speak about us, You can never put down a man who has a destiny, whom God has destined to do something, whom God has placed to do something, whom God has called to go and do something, who God has said yes, and nobody can say no if God has said yes. At the end of the day, one day, they came, my fellow brothers, they came, they did exactly what he was telling them 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, they came and bowed before him. Why? They were begging for food. There was hunger in their land. They have to come and bow before me. Exactly what God said in the beginning. I saw grass bowing. Before my own it was standing. And they say, this dreamer, we have to get rid of him. Now they came to the land of Egypt, not knowing that they were going to buy for the same little funny boy with a colorful coat that Papa did for him. Destiny. Destiny. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Destiny. Hold on to what God has given you. Hold on to what God has said to you. Hold on to what you had God telling you. Because one day it will come to pass. It may tarry, but it will come to pass. It may take time, but it will come to pass. If God said you are blessed, you are blessed indeed. If God said you are standing, you are standing indeed. If God said sit, you will be seated. If God said rise, you are rising. If God said it's over, it means it's over. Be somebody that people can learn from. The only thing that we are crying about now, are we reaching our destinies?